So here we're going to make carbon fiber, and the way we do that in Illustrator is uh, here is my example carbon fiber um, final piece, and the reason I have that on here is so that you'll be able to follow along and kind of see what I'm trying to do um, as I'm building this. You'll be able to reference this over here on the side. So let's start off, and the way you do carbon fiber is again we want to have this on a grid so uh, the grid grids are based off of squares so with your shift tool uh, shift key held down click and drag and let's make a let's make a shape here and we're going to fill this with white and the stroke with black and I'm going to make the stroke uh, 0.25 point and zoom in on this now. So this shape here we want to divide into um, four four rows and four and four columns. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my line tool and create a line and then with shift and option I'm going to click and drag that over and we're going to blend these together with the blend tool. Now there's way too many points here, so we want to change that with specified steps. And all you need to do is double click on your blend uh, button. This window, options window, will come up and change the steps to three steps. And you can hit preview, and you'll see it's divided into four rows. Sorry, four columns. Hit OK. Now we're going to take this shape here we're gonna hit Apple C for copy and then Apple F and that pastes a duplicate right over top holding click your R button and hold shift and now you can click and drag and this will give you a 45 and a 90 degree rotation now it's not aligned so we're gonna use our selection tool and drag this up so it meets the, the uh, square shape Let's zoom in on it just to make sure that our shapes are aligned. And by hitting Apple Y, this will give you an outline view. All right, so Apple Y again. And I'm going to hit Apple negative minus sign to zoom out. All right, so now our shape, actually these lines don't exist technically, so we want to expand them. So I'm going to hold down Shift and expand and select both the rows and the column lines. We'll go to Object, Expand, and we'll hit OK with all these activated. And now we have all of our shapes are actual true vector lines. So with that still selected, let's go over here and hit Divide. And now it'll divide, and now every one of these little squares are separate shapes. I'm going to go ahead and fill that with a color just to show you what's happening and then with the black. So now you can see all those are actual shapes. Let's slide this over because our original square is still there. So let's delete that. And we don't need that artwork from on in the below layer, so let's just get rid of it. So now here with Shift, Apple, and G, you will ungroup, or you can go Object, Ungroup. And now these individually can be selected. So what I'm going to do is, you see here, I want these two t shapes to be as one. So I'm going to click on this with my Shift key now. I'm going to click the second one. I'm going to go to my Pathfinder, which you can find under Window. Pathfinder, for you it's not open. And under Pathfinder, I'm going to... Um, combine those two shapes together. Now you can see the line is still there so I'm going to expand that and that gets rid of any extra lines that are that are inside. Now I'm going to do that for this shape. Same thing here. Same thing here. These two and these two. And then let me go ahead and give these, oops, we just offset this, I'm going to hit undo. And with my eyedropper tool, I'm going to select this gradient here. Now you notice that our gradient is in the wrong direction. So 
we're going to have to go ahead and individually here select this one and apply the gradient with I'm going to hold shift right now click and I'm going to drag to do a straight gradient if I don't you know I don't have it's not going to align properly I'll be on an angle so if you hold down shift you'll get a nice straight line so let's select this do the same thing with the gradient which is just the G button and click hold down shift and drag now we have our vertical gradients happening here and then let's go ahead and do the same for our other ones here so those ones are already on a side to side gradient so we don't have to do anything to those now we want this shape here in the top right will be split apart and correspond with this shape down here as we tile this so what we want to do is let's bring this shape here so let's move this shape up on top here and we're going to do that because we want these to blend with the gradient and then half of that gradient is going to align down here so as this multi as this repeats itself this gradient will continue to extend and same with with this one over here so let's show you this one first and I'm gonna just extend that a little further and then with my just click shift and drag will align it straight and it should snap right to that point and now that those points are aligned we can take both of those with shift being held down use our eyedropper tool and select this gradient and again create the gradient from top down with both of those shapes selected so the gradient runs right through and then <clears throat> we want to take this shape now and bring that back down over here so let's get rid of this delete and zoom in and notice every time I come to this corner you you get the little sh box that appears on the side of the cursor that's telling you that you're gonna grab the end point so you can grab that drag it, and it should snap directly and align with the course with another corresponding point so it snaps to a point so now this shape will match that when this is repeated so same thing here let's click hold shift option drag it'll duplicate actually we don't need to duplicate that we could just drag this over and with Apple Y we will drag this there it snaps App, Apple minus will zoom out Apple Y and then select shift select this and we will use our eyedropper select this shape and now we need to apply the gradient across both and move this back over to this side and there you go so now we have a carbon fiber so here you can see what we were starting out with, what we wanted to achieve, and we achieved that here. And now we will group this, and when you drag this over into your swatch window, you'll see it, it'll appear here. Let me just get rid of a couple of these that we don't need here. Okay, so we just created that new one here. Now, when you create a shape, you can fill right here in the color window. You can select the fill, 
and then click on the carbon fiber. Now you just filled it with this pattern we created. And the great thing about this is if you hold down or you press S for scale and then hold your serif with shift, click and drag while holding those the serif and shift key down, you can scale this. You could keep doing it a couple times. You could scale that to whatever size you want. So if you're looking for a really tight um, a component or some of some sort that, that has a small carbon fiber look to it or depending on the scale of your design you can alter this you can also hit R and again serif and, and you can rotate this within within your shape and it doesn't matter what shape you have so I'm just gonna keep this just on this on this angle here now there's a couple ways to change the color I'm gonna show you a simple way let's go ahead and I just fill this with black. Let's make a, a, a couple shapes here. And I am going to duplicate these over. And I'm going to arrange and move these to the back. Now, let's just center this here. Now, what I'm going to do is let's make this a red. Let's make this a blue and let's make this a green just just real quick examples now I have my carbon fiber and if you go to transparency with this being on top if you use the multiply function that'll show through whatever base color you have so now your carbon fiber can take on whatever color of an object behind it you have so if we zoom in on that you can see this actually looks pretty pretty good and we didn't you know it's with hardly any effort so this is a really fast and easy function now if you want to really have red carbon fiber let's duplicate this and here we actually have a stroke here so we want to remove those strokes so over here, let's hit select all. That'll select your whole entire page. And then with shift being held down, just select this, deselect it. And with everything else selected, if you hit Apple 2, you'll lock. Or you can go here and just hit lock selection. And it'll lock everything else. Now, the only thing we'll be able to affect and change is this. You, you won't be able to grab anything else. So, and that's a great function for when you're doing your you're building your shapes anyways to, to lock everything else out and only alter this here and the reason why I'm doing that is if I use my direct selection tool and click on this when I go under select same fill color it's gonna select all the same fill sh colors that I've created with that gradient and that fill color is specific to all these horizontal shapes now this right here in the color window I want to change the gradient, so let's activate our gradient window. And our gradient, as you can see here, we have a 30% gray in the center and 80% on either side. Now I'm going to take that and let's take this red and just click and drag it and, and you'll change that center color to red. Now I'm going to drag it from up there bring it down and the reason I'm doing that is now I can change this to a little bit darker and notice how it's darkening up this this side here and you can you can get that to whatever color you want and then once I achieve this color I'm just gonna grab it from here because it's the same color I want on the other side and there you go your gradient has changed without moving these around you've just changed the colors now same thing for here we're gonna select that with your selection your white selection tool you're going to select same fill color, selected the other ones, and you're not selecting any of the ones you have up here, just the ones that are, haven't been locked. And now you can notice this one here, your center shade value is over to the left, so it's off center a little bit. So again, make sure this is up on top with your gradient selected, and we're going to do again the same thing, red. Now, I want to change this red just a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it and just get it kind of just off off color a bit. So now with that color selected, click that here, and I'm going to change the darkness of that with something that I like. And once I've 
have a color I like, I drag it to the other side. And I can actually change this one if I like to, something even darker. It all depends on, on what kind of effect you're looking to, to achieve. So now, my shape has been achieved for red. And so I will go and unlock all. And then with this, let's, let's select our new red. We'll drag that over. And there it is. It just populated the swatch window here. And I'm going to just click and drag this shape over. And now this shape here, I'm going to change this. I'm going to select it. My fill color is active on the top, and I'm going to click here. There you go. You have red carbon fiber. And again, you can rotate. Do whatever you want to do here. But there's red carbon fiber. So a couple ways to use that carbon fiber. And, you know, this intensity, you can change your gradient to be whatever um, darkness you want as far as, you know, these ones kind of running sideways uh, diagonally here. Kind of a little bit darker shade value and the others are lighter just to get that kind of woven effect. Um, you don't want to use the same gradient because it just won't look right. Um, this really gives it more of a natural natural look of carbon fiber. So that is our demonstration on how to build carbon fiber with an Illustrator file and how to have blends um, combine and align with each other by dividing them and, and moving them and aligning them correctly. So that's carbon fiber.